Let's get a 2011 oil outlook now from Sarah Hunt. She's a portfolio manager for Alpine Mutual Funds, which has $2.3 billion under management. Thank you for taking the time and coming to our studio, Sarah. Oil averaged about $79 a barrel this year. It's mm-hmm. closing out the year around 91, near its highs. What kind of price range will we see next year, and how quickly will we get to that $100 mark? Well, if you continue to see very cold weather, I think there's a psychology with weather that even though it isn't quite tied to the price of oil, I think when there's a lot of cold weather, people look at oil and they look to buy oil, especially the, the derivatives like heating oil. Um, I think you could see oil continue to move in a positive direction. You know, We expect it to stay in a band again, as it sort of was this year, except that it broke out a little at the end of the year. Um, but I think that you could see some stronger oil prices as we get through next year. How soon can we get to 100? <sighs> That's a magic question, isn't it? Um, <laughs> It, it depends, again, on, on weather, and it also depends on usage. I mean, part of the reason that you've seen strong oil prices is you are seeing good demand, and you're seeing travel come back, and airline travel came back, and there's a lot of things that are fueling that. The, the emerging markets have great, China has great demand for oil, so a lot of those places are going to continue to show that kind of demand. Without an, without an actual event, I don't expect a price spike over 100, but I think you can see it continue to creep. We hit 147 in the summer of 2008. Will we ever revisit those levels? Well, ever probably, yes. I don't know when. Um, I think that that's one of those confluence of events where you had a lot of strong demand. It looks like the world. It looked like the world economies were all moving very high together at the same time. Mm. I think right now you've got the OECD that's very obviously weak. You've got the emerging markets that are strong. So I'm not sure that you have the same confluence of events that caused that. Plus, you had a lot of speculation that supply was a problem and demand was going to catch up. So I think at some point you start to look at those numbers, but I'm not sure that, that there's anything that's going to drive us that high that quickly. Okay. What about OPEC's role? I wonder if they're going to start making noise about production quotas once again and how that would drive oil prices? Well, I think that, you know, anybody who looks at higher oil prices knows that that's a tax on the consumer, right? So they've got to be looking at this and going, the world economies aren't that strong. You don't really want to have very high prices because it's going to take a bite out of other activity. So I think that you'll see more slippage in the in the actual production numbers. And I think that they're going to, people are going to look to try to start jawboning it down. Now, whether or not that causes an opposite spike, because all of a sudden that's something that hasn't happened in a while, I'm not sure that could happen. But I think that there's going to be more of a focus on it as that creeps up for the reason that it's an economic detriment to the rest of you know the world and the mm. consumers and everybody else. Okay, so with this outlook that oil will likely continue rising into 2011, how how do you play it? Do you buy oil services companies? Do you buy oil refiners? We, we Well, we have um, service companies and we have the exploration production companies. Um, refining is a very cyclical trade and there are times to own refiners, but it's, it's, it's a little tricky and that time sort of changes. I think that the service stocks had been hit badly by what happened in the Gulf of Mexico with BP. Right, Transocean and Anadarko haven't recovered yet from that spill. But also the other service, Slumberger was hit, Halliburton was hit, because pricing came down because you had a big region of the world that was no longer doing the kind of activity, so you had excess capacity in the market. That's starting to go away, and you're starting to see better prices, so the service companies are starting to do better. So clearly, if you're going to have continued exploration, which you will, Uh the service companies are going to benefit for that. So Halliburton, Slumberger, Seadrill is is one of the drillers that has the type of assets that Transocean has, but not the current issue that they're facing. Um, and, and I think the companies that own oil and gas assets, Occidental Petroleum, has, you know, we like some of those companies as well. And it's, there are a lot of ways to stay long oil. And if oil continues to go higher, those stocks are going to continue to perform. What about the Exxons and the Chevrons of the world? There's room for them in portfolios as well. Um, at the moment, we don't hold Exxon. We have in the past. Um, I think that if you're bullish on oil, some of the smaller mid players, sort of like an Occidental, give you a little bit more beta for your oil play than an Exxon does because Exxon is just so big, it's hard for them to move the needle. But as an asset play and a dividend play, that's a good stock too. Okay, just going back to your earlier comment about uh, demand from emerging markets for mm-hmm. oil, I want to bring in as well the U.S. element to it because the U.S. Mm-hmm. economy is certainly recovering and looks to be gaining momentum into 2011, uh, you know, dismissing today's data, of course. Um, <laughs> no, the absent housing prices were exactly. doing fine. Yeah. Um, which will prove the more dominant driver here for, for oil? Will it be demand from the emerging markets or the stronger U.S. economy and therefore stronger dollar and therefore weaker oil? Well, there's obviously a connection between dollar and the, the dollar and oil. So if the dollar strengthens, I think that that gives you some relief on oil prices because mm-hmm. that's the way that that relationship has been running. 
I think that the, the U.S. and Europe have been creeping back on their demand side, but th that part, this part of the world has also been more efficient. So you're seeing smaller cars, you're seeing those kind of efficiency. I think the real driver for demand is going to be the emerging markets. It's going to be China, it's going to be India, it's going to be places where you're adding a whole fleet of vehicles right. you didn't have. Right. The U.S., that fleet isn't going to change very much, so it's really just a question of timing and how long that lasts. All right, thank you for your thoughts. We appreciate it.